Hello, I'm Wayland. Can, can everybody hear me, see me? Yep, you sound great. Um, okay. Um, so yeah, I'm talking about how I continuously deliver content to my blog using Markdown, GitHub, Python, and Netlify. Um, I like to think of it as content at the speed of thought. Um, so just like throughout my day, um, I'm kind of like poking at it and continuously adding to it. Um, so it's coming out at kind of as fast as I can get it typed out. Um, so I'm, uh, I guess graduated college as a mechanical engineer and kind of slowly uh, over the course of time moved over into data science and data engineering. Um, and that brought me to Python, of course. Uh, slowly over that, I became, I went from a uh, mechanical engineer afraid of the terminal to being a terminal chunky. As you can see, we're doing our slides right in the terminal. Um, make sure you join the Slido today. Uh, got the uh, number here. I do have a link to the slides at the top. So if you miss anything, uh, just uh, hit this link and you'll see um, slides we got um, somewhere here. Uh, so you'll see it. It's just a post on my site. Um, and then we're moving the markdown over to uh, look at me slides. Um, so I'd like to start off with a Slido poll. Do you have a personal blog, notes, or website? Um, like to think that everybody here at least has some sort of interest in making their own content. Um, so answers, yes. Do you build it statically with Python? Do you run a server uh, with Python? Or yes, but it's not in Python. Or no, that's fine too. Uh, we'll circle back to the poll in just a few minutes. Um, he's got it up here. Um, I'll give a, give away my answer. Yes, and it is statically built with Python. Um, also, we have the Slack channel. Uh, make sure you uh, light it up with some fire or pick your favorite emoji, whatever you want. I'll try to poke in there to look for some questions too, if you've got a question. Um, so I broke this up into four different parts. Uh, talk about um, why I blog. Talk about my workflow. Uh, I'll try to peek under the hood. I ended up writing a ton of slides with a ton of code, and I didn't like how it worked out. So we're going to kind of blaze through that quick and maybe get to the end where um, I have open sourced under the hood of my blog. Um, so way back in 2016, the economy hit a downturn and many companies were laying off. Uh, the company I was at at the time was kind of cutting away entire sections or groups of people at a time. So really it didn't depend on who you are, it just depended on which group you were in and how uh, lucky you were, whether you would stay with the company or not. And I'm like, oh, I, have put all this work into being at this company. And if I get let go, what do I have to share for the work I've done here? Um, and I was inspired by some other folks out there in the data engineering Python community that had their own blog and had their own content. And it looked like they, you know, they had this big network of people. I wanted that for myself. So that's kind of where I came from. Also in 2016, my wife was diagnosed with uh, cancer that's um, uncurable. Um, so I wanna make sure I have some sort of security for, um, for my family. I've got uh, two kids at home. I've gotta try to provide for them and I'm just doing the best I can here. Um, Emux is gonna let me go to the next slide. Um, so with my own content, you know, Twitter is a great networking tool, it allows you to connect to a lot of folks with similar ideas. Python community is a fantastic community out there on Twitter. But honestly, it's really rare to see anything more than just a couple hours old. Their feed is, is pretty, I don't know what the word is for it, but 
um, it dies. So unless you are really searching or someone digs up an old post, uh, Twitter's not just going to show it for you. I want my content to be my own, and I want it to be on my own domain, not on a platform that can shut it down when they want or just simply not share it or make it not discoverable. Um, huge discoverability points, sharing or uh, host, maintaining your own uh, platform where you can kind of go back and see your own notes, ideas throughout time. Uh, so after many years of doing this, a few stats I have, last I checked on Ahrefs was 48 of my posts are in the top 10 page, uh, giving me uh, 6,500 monthly clicks on Google uh, with uh, about 12,000 page views monthly. Um, I think it's just so cool that people are looking for a solution to a problem and come across my content based on something that I wrote, probably because I didn't know how to do something and I had to figure out how to do it. So I created a post that I wish I could have seen. Um, and it's so cool to see sometimes on Twitter, you'll see a link to your blog. And it's just so cool that unsolicited, uh, someone, uh, enjoyed your content so much that they wanted to share it with all of their friends. Um, big inspiration for me is uh, Swix. He has this post here, uh, Learn in Public. Um, I like to think of it, or he, he calls it uh, Learning Exhaust. So as you're learning, you're building out this content to um, help teach others or help network and help yourself just remember uh, some of those things that are um, hard to remember. You can't remember everything. Um, so he says, whatever your thing is, just make the thing you wish you had when you were learning. And don't judge by the stats. Uh, um, just make the things that you want. And the stats will come over time. Um, and I don't know, they kind of make me feel good that someone cares about the things that I write. But on each post, I really don't care if I get a hundred likes or two. It's it, it is what it is, and it was valuable for me in the process, and it might be valuable for someone else. Um, as you're starting out, make sure you're focusing on just make content. Get yourself a, a workflow that allows you to just focus on content. Uh, especially the first several years of building my own site, waylandwalker.com, I focused on a lot of things that just didn't matter. Um, you know, you aren't going to need Elasticsearch when you have three posts or 10 posts. No, they, your posts are just there. They can find them. Or nobody's even looking at you because you don't have enough content to really get picked up yet. So, just make it, just make the content and uh, worrying about a con commenting system. If nobody's finding you yet, nobody's going to be making comments. Um, so, and this is true for me at least, that I was my biggest audience out of the gate. I was making the content that I wanted to see and I would refer back to it pretty often. Or when somebody asked me uh, a question, uh, hit me up on at work with a, you know, like a, a chat message. I could respond with, "Hey, I've talked about it in this post. Take a look at it and let me know what you think. We can chat about it later." But this will get you started. Um, and last, don't worry about the trolls. No one's going to take away your Python keys because you had a bad post or because you said something that might not be technically correct. I mean, make, uh, you know, make your content as accurate as you can. And a lot of times, like the posts are just like, this is what works for me. Whether it's the best way or not, this is what worked for me. And it might work for someone else. And you know what? You might have someone come by and say, there's a better way. And you can learn from that. And that's okay. 
um, let's take a look over at the poll in Slido. We're getting the fire built up here in Slack. Um, I guess I will answer. And the top one, I guess, did I answer? Yeah, okay. Um, top one is yes, but not in Python or no. Um, and that's okay. So um, not everybody needs a blog, but if you're here, you're probably interested in how I do it or just how you could do it um, or how you could move it over to Python. Let's talk about uh, my workflow for a little bit. Um, and then we'll get into under the hood. So if you take anything away from this, just maybe see how, how easy it can be. The flow I have, um, I've slowly kind of over time gotten to, is making these uh, very short, today I learned type of posts. Um, very much inspired by Josh Branchad. And I don't know if, about you guys, but I Google a lot of things about Git. And I end up reading a lot of his today I learned posts just because they're shown up on Google quite a bit. And they're so helpful because a lot of times it's just exactly the answer I needed at the, uh, the point in time. I'd like to think that I can take these today I learns and make larger posts out of them and slowly build those larger posts into YouTube content or conference talks just like this. But it keeps me in the habit of writing every single day. Um, so I'm going to jump on over to... Uh, my blog here, and I'm going to ask for uh, for a template. I use Copier for my templates. Um, it's kind of like Cookie Cutter if you've ever used Cookie Cutter, except it works a lot better for single files, whereas Cookie Cutter is really good for a whole project. Um, I have a hotkey in Tmux that kind of goes to a directory of Copier templates, and I have this one here for a Today I Learned post and it's in my copier templates directory. If I hit yes, we get here. Um, I wanted to make one, how I present uh, um, slides from the terminal. And we'll maybe slug this a little shorter with just like, uh, look at me slides and then I give it a couple of tags um, just go quick and then and we've got to find this post um, I guess I got the the uh, how I did that here if you want to look at it um, I have about 700 files on my blog to sift through um, so part of my static site generator I made a nice way to filter so I can filter down to a today I learned template key and sort by date and reverse it. I've even added a little um, M key binding. So, so if I go here and we hit that key bind, it'll take a second and we can see, look at me slides. And I get this, CLI is one of them that I might add here. And I'll show an example of how this workflow might work. Um, I have this snippet. So often, like I said, as I'm working throughout my day, I will come across something interesting to me and I will just make a quick note of it. Um, I used to stick to, to the Pomodoro technique quite a bit. And one of the things you would do there is slice out your time that I'm going to work in this window of time. And the only thing I can do during that time is my task or take a note. So this would have been in that category of take a note. Just give me a new template and paste in a command. Um, and then once daily, I take 15 minutes or so and uh, fill these posts out, post them, and then cross post them. Uh, so I finished this post out for us today. Um, I, I'll go ahead and paste it in here. And today is the 21st, so my date 
date is automatically right. Um, it posts it in UTC time for me. That's fine. I guess that's just how Copier works. If you're interested in how these slides work, um, I'm using Look at Me, and I have a nice key binding to uh, bounce back and forth between Look at Me and my editor. I talk about in this post, and we'll go ahead and post this post with a, a Git key binding. It looks like um, uh oh, save. I think I forgot to save. Um, and it does run pre-commit. I think the only thing I have running in pre-commit is to fix trailing white space. Um, create. Um, okay, and then we'll do a git push with key binding, and it is off and running. Um, so I talked about getting the snippet, filling in the content, and then I did. I have a GIC to do a git commit and GPP for git push. So it's nearly live, and it'll be live in a couple minutes. And if I look here, you can see my nice typo here in my git. In my git, um, it looks like my build times are creeping up on me again. That happens occasionally. Um, when you're just like making content and making stuff and uh, not focused on build times as much. So in about seven or eight minutes, I will have a brand new post that we can share. Um, take. A... Yep, of course, Chris, uh, this agree that uh, writing for yourself, um, check the slide you. Okay. Um, I've cross posting is a fantastic tool to network with other people and get your posts out there. Um, I've there's a lot of places you can cross post to, and I've tried in the past to cross post to maybe up to six different places simultaneously. It gets very overwhelming and it takes a lot of energy. So the places I've kind of settled in on lately, um, especially life got busy on me. I just had to move and some other things. So I'm just posting to Twitter and Dev2. Um, so Twitter, I just give like a short snippet about the article and then the link. And then Dev2, I have a nice uh, plugin in my uh, static site generator. We can take a look at take a look at all our tills and you can see just how short these can be. This is probably the shortest one I've ever done, but um, yeah, it can be this short. And if I just go to dev.md, it gives me a markdown designed for dev.to. So then I can just paste this over and it's ready. Um, I can do all my cross posting in a minute or two. Um, Okay, we just checked out all that. So let's talk about how it's deployed. In March of 2021, I made a big switch from one of the big JavaScript frameworks over to my own static site generator. I thought this would be pretty easy. There's a lot of open source libraries out there in Python that do all the things I need it to do. Converting Markdown to HTML um, and all those kind of things. I really wanted to explore the idea of building a plugins all the way down framework with Pluggy and how to do caching for something like that with disk cache. So that was just an interest that I wanted to do. Also, huge selling point for me, when my JavaScript build got slow, I mean, sometimes it was taking like 20 minutes to do a deploy. It made it really hard to move fast and make these short posts and get them out there but I had no idea why it was slow. I write, I dabble in JavaScript, but I'm not in the ecosystem. I don't have good profiling tools in my belt and all of that. So with Python, I've got my REPL, IPython. I've got my favorite profiler Py instrument and the classic 
print statements and breakpoints and all that kind of stuff um, are very fluid to me. So having my, my blog in Python made a huge difference in how fast I could change it. Um, so this is the part where I kind of want to jump through real quick um, how it comes together. And so this is maybe the process I went through over that last year of um, changing it to a full Python site. Um, everything is marked down. Um, good point here is that if you're writing Markdown with uh, with some front matter on it, you can move between uh, a number of static site generators with that same content pretty fluidly. I've taken the content that um, potentially may have started in uh, one of the Python frameworks. I can't remember what it was called. Um, for some reason, it didn't work out for me. So I moved over to JavaScript and now I'm back in Python and my content survived through all of those moves. Um, front matter is simply YAML at the top of your markdown document with the three dashes. Um, in the post we just saw, you, pro you could, I should have explained it more, but I mean, you can see the data is at the top. So this will be data or metadata attached to our post that we can read in later. Um, what enables me to use this here is the Python front matter library. I use the Python markdown library along with pymdown extensions. These are the list of extensions that I have enabled. I don't think I really use them a lot. I really like a pretty simple and plain markdown so that I can move to other things easier. And if someone were to just look at it on GitHub, I'd like to think that the article is mostly readable from within GitHub. So I try not to stray too far away from that GitHub flavored markdown. Um, so we add these extensions to a markdown object and that gives us a instance that we can render. Um, as I talked about, one of the biggest uh, things I wanted to do moving over to Python was explore Pluggy in this idea of uh, making a plugins all the way down framework. Um, so the idea there is that I would build out this framework that just had a set of lifecycle methods that it executed on and that I could add or remove uh, plugins to do different things with that same lifecycle. Um, the current lifecycle implementation I have runs through configuration, globbing, which is looking for files, loading those files, um, doing it, what I call a pre-render, which is just like cleaning up the files or metadata, um, maybe doing something to the plain markdown and then rendering that markdown to HTML and then making that HTML ready to save. Um, so Pluggy allows you to create a framework, allows the framework to create what's called a hook spec. And it allows plugin authors to create a hook implementation. So as the, uh, as the framework author, I make pretty much just this empty class and I call it Marcata Specs. And then I have methods for each of my lifecycle methods. Um, and they are decorated with a hook spec and they're pretty much just uh, empty functions. And then I register a plugin manager, add my hook specs, and maybe most importantly here, from the user's configuration, I import their hook and register their hook as a plugin. So this is how a user decides what uh, plugins they want to run. Um, as I said, I'm using disk cache. So as I do different things to the content, um, such as rendering it to HTML or adding um, SEO tags, I store that in cache. So if the inputs into the function are exactly the same between builds, I get an almost instant build in between builds. Um, I think 
I might have a little bit of a cash issue. That's why we're taking like seven minutes on uh, GitHub right now. But on my local machine, um, if I do a build and a second build, that second build takes um, under three seconds, maybe even less. Um, so to put something into cache, we have to make a key. Um, typically, I add, um, here I talk about it, uh, the entire plugin. So I read that um, file into text, or I read the text of the file. And then anything that my plugin touches from your content. So I look at the article's content, and maybe if I pulled the title of your article to put as like an H1 tag, I would also add that to my, uh, my caching key. Uh, so then we can quickly just uh, grab the HTML right out of the cache. Um, I should say that uh, disk cache is pretty much just, a, it's like a SQLite database with some nice caching type of features. Uh, so it does things like cache and validation for us. So you might want to say only store so many items in the cache or expire this after so many seconds. Um, so you can see I have kind of a default expiration. I don't even remember what this comes out to in seconds, but um, that way I ensure that each page gets rebuilt at least on some sort of schedule in case uh, something got cached when it shouldn't have. Eventually it'll all come out. So if nothing, so I try to get it from the cache and if nothing is there, this cache just gives me none. And when it gives me none, I make the HTML and add it to the cache. Um, under the hood, we're using any config. It's a pretty good tool to add configuration to files like your pyproject.toml, where many different tools will be configured. And it will grab just your tools configuration. Uh, we can do that by in, uh, installing any config, importing it, and loading up a file with a parser and the name of your tool. So that maybe a pretty small version of my configuration is in Toml. So I give it my uh, tools key. And then I can set things like my cache ex expiration default. And then under that, I can create um, I think these are essentially dictionaries is what comes out. So each plugin will have a dictionary. And here I'm setting the auto description plugin description uh, length to 160. Um, so after I went through this whole process of building this framework, uh, Mercado was born. And about January, somewhere early this year, I made it open source and I put it on PyPI. It has six different lifecycle methods. It has, I guess, 21 predefined plugins. I don't remember last I counted. It might have more or less by now. It has the cache storage and a Toml-based uh, configuration. Um, oh, to touch on the last part of the site maybe taking a step back here. Um, I'm deploying with GitHub Actions. Um, so GitHub Actions are just kind of defined in YAML. And first thing I do is I check out my cache and then I make sure I have Python 3.8 installed. I install Marcata and I do a Marcata run and then push to my host. Um, no, if you go to my site and try to uh, copy from me, note that I'm running on the bleeding edge of Marcata. Uh, I wouldn't recommend that because it changes and sometimes breaks. And I do this so it breaks on me and not you. Um, so the place I deploy at the end of that uh, GitHub action is was Netlify at the time that I wrote the proposal for this talk. Um, I'm now on Cloudflare Pages. There's a bunch of hosts that you can use to host a static site for free. Um, Netlify is a great tool, uh, but 
but I'm cheap and I wanted analytics and Cloudflare pages gives me analytics so I can see um, what pages are doing well and try to understand things like that. Um, so Marcata.dev, um, I guess Marcata, one of the things that, that it's focused on is making, building your content easy so that you can just focus on your markdown content to build out a site. So I want, I don't, I don't want you to focus on figuring out SEO tags, OG images, um, trying to make your feeds and RSS and develop a CLI and a build tool. All of those things are um, kind of a huge hurdle just to get into blogging. If you go down the route like I did to making your own, um, there are other static site generators that you can use. Um, for me, I didn't find one that worked well for me that was written in Python and the ones that weren't written in Python. Like I said, I really struggled to extend it and make it what I wanted um, without getting stuck uh, with, um, with something I didn't understand. Um, so like I said, early this year, I packaged it up as, um, as a package on PyPI. Um, I've got a buddy at work that now has 15 posts that he wouldn't have otherwise had. He's not a web developer. He has no interest in web development, but he has ideas in his head that are really great. I'm not going to link him here because he he's still kind of in a phase of, of trying to get it where he wants it before he goes public. Um, another one is uh, the Tech Destructive blog. Um, I can show it off here because he has gone public and he even has this post where he shows um, his build with Mercata. Um, so this whole site here it is uh, built with Mercata. Um, are we still live? I, I hope I didn't fall off the... Uh, um the zoom like i said marcata is plugins all the way down and you can use the parts that you like or modify things to your only to your own liking uh do know it's pretty early on um pretty beta so expect it to change but if you want to use it you can it lets you get started real quick write content early and grow it into your own platform. And if you get a point to a point where you decide that Marcata is not for you, switch over to something else because that Markdown is written uh, very much in a way that, uh, that you can trans uh, transfer it to another uh, platform. I did want to, if we had time, I feel like it, maybe I spoke too, qu <laughs> too quickly. Um, to run through an example. So what was the purpose to create a blog in the beginning and what is it now? So at the beginning, it was just watching how um, people at my company were getting let go. And I felt like if I was one of those people, I didn't know what I could bring with me. And this is a way that I can bring my ideas with me. Not, definitely not company intellectual property, but things that I have learned that are more tools in my tool belt. Um, and I'd say it's still kind of that way. It's a way for me to help teach others, help network. And it's also that idea of the second brain, um, that it's a place for you to uh, remember your things. Oh, and we got uh, Daniel Roy Greenfield here. That's super cool to see in the chat. Um, so let's go ahead and um, build a blog real quick. Um,
let's call it example. Um, so we will switch over to example. And where are my posts? I have uh, links in the post too. Um, so we're just going to first make some pages. Um, I'm going to make those real simple. Um, so go here, we have a hello world. And so you're not showing your screen right now. So if you wanna oh, switch to hey. The screen. There you go. <laughs> Sorry. Thanks. Thanks for uh, getting me back in line. Um, so I made some posts here. I just echoed some content into a markdown file. And let's see, do I have, I can just run pip x. X run. Uh, so it'll install Marcata in a virtual environment. I'd recommend if you are actually building your blog and have other dependencies, uh, you know, make a proper requirements.txt, make a proper virtual environment. But if you just have a directory of Markdown and you want to see it live, go ahead and type X run it. Um, so now I have a markout directory and I should have um, a cache directory. Um, so that first build took 12 seconds. That includes the pipx install. Uh, next one took two seconds. Um, so we can just give our old friend python -m -http server with a directory of editing for me. We'll go here, uh, mark out. So by default, I put the site in mark out. Um, so we'll hit up localhost 5000. This is not our site. Um, so give it what I have running on 8000. So here we have a feed with uh, some posts. Kind of looks duplicated because the title and everything are that way. Um, have kind of an experimental. We can see if that, that'll work for us. Um, X run Marcata TUI will give us this TUI, uh, give us a little summary of the articles we have um, published, drafted, and all of our plugins, and that it's running on um, 8,000. So now if I go in and make some content, we can go back to this first post and we've got some content already made for us. Um, so as fast, you should see it, um, this runner element here, uh, should fire as we save. Slack real quick, see if we've got uh, questions. Uh, no questions in the Slido and Calvin's loving the live demo. Um, and, the, and the terminal awesomeness. Um, and I left some time in for content or for comments, but what else, thinking through what else we can do. I don't know if, do you have a comment or a co uh, question, Calvin? Since you're here. No, nothing specific. I think it's been an awesome talk. Okay. Um, if folks wanted to okay. join you over in the face-to-face, -face, we could you know, cut it here and actually let folks go over there to uh, discuss. Okay. That works I'm too. good with that. Um, I guess I can show off. We do, I do have a website for Marcata um, and it does, so marcata.dev and this hello world that we just went through, uh, you can go through yourself. I guess it even adds the front matter. 
Um, and then it actually builds its own docs. So like I said, it's plugins all the way down. So I made a plugin that loaded Python modules and docs are heavily not out there yet, but this is just a .py file. And you can see the source and the docs.